The Kamet Beis, we begin a new Pedic today. This Pedic is a Hemshech to the Halachas Benigeya, to what is the minimum shear that a person should be mighty on Shabbos when he would be Chayev in a carbon. Hamatsniya lezera o ledugme o A person that uh, is storing something. So he shows that for him it's Choshev, he's storing it. Whether it's something that he's going to plant, something that he's showing to somebody as a sample, or something that he's using as a medicine. And he carried it out on Shabbos. So then, he's chayiv, even if it was a tiny amount. Because if he is matzniya it, so he shows that this is chasha for him. So all the shiurim that we said before would not apply. This is a halacha that it said all the way in the beginning of this whole Indian. Remember now where it was, in the beginning of Peirik. That's a long time ago. In the beginning of one of the Prakim, where it said this klal. That even though there's all these shiurim, but nevertheless, if you yourself were matzniya this amount, so then, it's in the middle of Klal Godl actually, in the second mission of Klal Godl, it says, Va'it klal omru, if you're matzniya this amount, then you're going to be chayev. Chol adam, but any other individual, ain't chayev alo veliki shiurei, will only be chayev if you took out the amount, the minimum amount that is uh, usually it's used for. Chazavich nisai, this individual that took out this kol shuhu, because he was matzniyat, he was going to use it for a certain thing, but then he took it out and he didn't use it for that. And then he brings it back in. Chazav Echnisa, he brings it back in to the Rishus HaYachid. Ein Echayev Elekishiyuroi. So then he's only going to be Chayev for the minimum amount that it says, because we see he didn't use it for that Kol Shehu that he was planning to use it for. Frekta Gemara, Lomalila Misniya Matzniya. Why is it saying the Mishnah? That only if the person stored it in advance. That's what it's Mashmah here. The person stored this cultural in advance for a certain use, then I say that this little tiny amount is chosher for him and he's chayev. Listen, let the Mishnah say, He actually went and took it out. He took it out for zera to plant or to show a sample or for refuah that chayev b'kolshuhu. If he took it out for this purpose, so the action that he's doing, that he's having b'chavonet to take it out for this purpose, that in itself shows that he's machshavit for this. Why is it necessary for the person to store it in advance for this purpose, and then he took it out for this purpose? Only then would he be chayef for a kol shehul. You know what we're talking about over here in this Mishnah. The Mishnah is saying a different chiddush. The person stored it for this purpose. He stored a tiny amount for this purpose. But then he forgot about that. He didn't pay attention to that. And And now when he's carrying it out, he's carrying it out without that original purpose that he uh, put it away for. So now I would say, The original machshava that he had, he put it away for a purpose, is now bottled because now he's taking it out stam. He's not thinking about his original machshava. Kamash Malon, so therefore the Mishnah teaches us that no. Kola Isa al Das Rishaina Hu Isa. When a person does something stam and he's not paying attention to why he's doing this, it goes back to the original Machshave because he was Matsniyat before. The action that he does now is a Hemshech to his original Matsniyat that he put it away and therefore it's going to be Chayav even on the Kol Shehu. So what the Gemara here is saying is, when a person takes something out and he's taka having kavana to take it out for a purpose, so then it's not necessary to be matzniyat in advance to be chai for that. When you're taking it out stam, the Mishnah was machadish, that if you were matzniyat before, what you're doing now stam connects back to the matzniyat that you did before. So why the end of the Mishnah are you talking? Uh, uh, the Gemara is going to talk about it soon. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Talk to Gemara Amar Rav Yudah Mashmuel Mechayev Ayer Rav Meir Rav Meir said that you would be Chayev Af B'Moitzi Chita Achas Lazriya When a person took out one Chita, one kernel of wheat to plant, you'd be Chayev for that. If you're taking it out for that purpose, so you're showing that for you this is Choshev, so you'd be Chayev for this. Correct the Gemara Pshita. This is obvious. Kol Shutna. This is exactly what it said in our Mishnah that if you take out a Kol Shuhu. Because that's what you want to use it for. So then it's choshev to you and yechayev. So what's the statement over here any different than what it says in the Mishnah? And Rashi adds to that, Stam Mishnah Rav Meir. So he's saying it in the name of Rav Meir. So this was the town of our Mishnah. And for the Gemara, Mao, the Teime, I would think to say that maybe the Pshat in the Mishnah would be different. Kol Shuhu. When it says in the Mishnah Kol Shuhu, 
That comes to exclude that the usual amount that's used by food would be a gregoris, the size of a dry fig. And the Mishnah is saying even less than that. That's the Pshat of culture in the Mishnah. But but you do need the amount of a kezayis, which is smaller than a kegregeris. That's what kosher would mean. Kamash Malon, therefore he said over here that he was mighty, when he was mighty, chita achas, which is much smaller than a kezayis, that you'd be chayiv, so you should understand that the Pshat in the Mishnah is that it means literally a kosher, even one tiny kernel, and not a kezayis. Mask of Lord of Yitzchak Bereder of Yehudem. So he asked the question on this, So now, if so, if you're telling me that based on the person's machshave, that's what determines the amount that you'd be chayev for. And even if it's a tiny amount, you'd be chayev for that. Right. So if so, the question would be, how about the other way around? The person's kavana was that he's taking out everything from his house on Shabbos. He wants to remove everything for whatever reason, he has to remove everything from his house on Shabbos into the Rosh Hashanah. Are you going to say that since this is this person's kavana and for him it's important and it's chashiv to remove everything of his house, he's only going to be chayv if he removes everything? And for the Gemara, no. That, we're not going to say that. Hasam, batla daita it's the kolodam. In such a case, the person's machshave is not relevant and what he thinks is bottle to other people, usually people that's not what's considered to be chashiv. It's much smaller is considered to be chashiv. So Taisus of here explains that when it comes to what we said before, a person that's might see one zera, one little thing to plant, even though usually that's not what people are might see, but nevertheless it's quite common that a person takes out one zera for the fuwa, for a dugme, or to plant, and therefore over there you don't say the klal of batla daita it's a kaladam. But when a person has a machshava to be might see kol beisai, that's unusual. That's something that uh, the person's das will be batla it's a kaladam. The Mishnah said, Any other person is only going to be chayiv on this if he took out the minimum amount that it was mentioned, and not a kosher. So, what it says here in the Mishnah is not following the opinion of Rabshim ben Alaza, which we had this already before already. The Tanya, we learned before, Rabshim ben Alaza, Rabshim ben Alaza said as follows. When you have an item that's not usually fit for putting away, or even if it is an item that people put away, but it's a small amount, it's a small size, and people don't usually put away this amount. But then you have one individual that he wants it, and he does put it away for something. Now, and somebody else came and was might see this object that you were matzniya. Because there was one person that made it chashev by him storing it, even if someone else comes and is might see it, your machshava will be significant, not only for yourself, but even for somebody else. That if someone else will be might see this thing, that will be chayev for it. Dafke this particular object that you were machshev, correct. That's a big chiddush, Abshim ben Allah says, your machshava is effective for somebody else. So the Tan of our Mishnah that says, is saying, your machshave is effective for yourself, but not for another person. If a person took out the minimum amount, which is a kegregeris, and his intention was for eating it. And then, he changed his mind in the middle of the malacha that he's going to use it for planting. Inami, or the case was Lizriya, he took out a kagregeris and Lachatchili was thinking that he's going to plant it. And he changes his mind in the middle of the malacha that he's going to eat it. Chayef. So he's going to be chayef for this malacha. Frekta Gemara, Pshita. Obviously he would be chayef. Why shouldn't he be chayef? Zil hoche ikishiyura. Go over here, look at his kavana to eat. There's the shir of the kagregeris. Vizil hoche, and look at his kavana to plant it, ikishiyura. Either way, there's a shear. The kagregeris is larger than the shear for planting. So, either way, you have the shear of the minimum size for the malacha. So, what difference does it make if he changed his mind in the middle of the malacha? And for the gemara, ma'o de teime. So, I would think as follows. Be'inon, akire vahanoche, bechodem machshove. The akira and the hanoche, that are the two main components of the malacha, has to have the same machshove, he's doing it for the same purpose. And here he begins with the purpose that he wants to eat it, and he finishes with another kavana that he wants to plant it, and therefore maybe the two parts of the malacha don't connect together. 
Kamashmula, and therefore the Chiddush over here of this halacha is that as long as it has the minimum size, both qualified for Achila or for Zriya, you don't have to have the same purpose of the Malacha by the Akira and the Hanacha. Boy, Rav, so now Rav has the following Shaila. He carried out a half a gregeris for zriya, for planting. So the half a gregeris is large enough to qualify for the minimum needed for zriya, for planting. Now the tofcha, whatever he was mighty, it, um, it blew up. It, 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 the size of it, <laughs> how, huh? it somehow it expanded, whether through liquid or whatever it is, it expanded. The nimla chalel, and now it's a kegregeris. Now it's the right size of the kegregeris. The nimla chalel la and now he's thinking that he wants to use it to eat. Ma, what's going to be the halacha? Im tim Now, if you're going to say the previous case, going back to the previous case, hasam hu demachayev. Over there, the person would be chayev. The zil hache kishiyura, the zil hache kishiyura. Both parts of the malacha that he did, there's a shear. There's a shear for what the person was thinking because he had a kagregeris. But hacha over here, ki even the bidne daafke lehave beshir achile. At the time when he began the malacha, when he took it out, it did not yet have the shear of achile. Loy mechayev. Maybe he shouldn't be chayev, since in the end of the malacha he was doing the malacha for the purpose of achile, and the first part of the malacha did not have a shear of that uh, achile. Was only a half kegregeris. Maybe he shouldn't be chayev. Oidelme, or maybe we could say he should be chayev. Even the ilu ishtak v'leich chashav alel, if he would be quiet, if he wouldn't change his mind from his original machshava that he took it out for the purpose of zriya, he would be chayev. He began the malacha with the machshava of zriya and it had the shear. And if he would be quiet, it has the shear. So a machshava de zriya, mechayev a machshava de zriya, he would be chayev for that machshava zriya. So hashdan ami mechayev. So therefore now he should be chayev as well when it grows bigger and he changes his machshava ta'achila, it doesn't take away from the first part of the action of the malacha. The first part of the action of the malacha qualified for a malacha, for the machshava of zriya that he had then. Even though based on the machshava that he changed now, going back before, it did not have the qualified amount for achila, but what he had, the kavana then it did have. So therefore it should be chayef. That's the shayla here. Now it goes weiter, another shayla, v'im tim if you're going to say regarding this question. Since if he would have kept, if he would have been quiet and kept his original machshava, and he wouldn't change his mind now to use it for achila, he would be chayev for the first machshava of zriya. So hashdanami machayev, and therefore now as well he would be chayev. So now the question would be: Could we apply this to another case? He takes out. He does have the size of a kegregeris, and he's taking it out for the purpose of achila. And it, it, uh, it um, contracted, it became smaller. And now he's thinking that he's going to use it for planting. Mahu, what's going to be the halacha here? In this case, if he would have kept his original machshava of achila, he wouldn't be chayev. Because when it came the time to conclude the malacha, it didn't have the shir anymore. So therefore, over here I should say that he should be potter. Or maybe I should say, Look at what's happening right now. Right now, he, he did change his mind. He changed his mind that he wants to use it for Zriyeh. And now at the time that he wants to use it for Zriyeh, it uh, has the amount that it could be used for Zriyeh. It actually became smaller, but it's good for Zriyeh. And therefore, he should be Chayev. Right to the Gemara goes. Vim tim tzeloi mar and the step. The, 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 what, what's this over here? Where are we holding the fourth shaila? Um, but if you're going to say that Allah it is a basa hashdas linon that I do follow the status of his machshave and the status of the malacha the way it's done presently, machayev and therefore in the previous case when it became smaller and he changed his mind to zriya he would be chayev because presently it has the shear haitzi kegreger eslachila. He took it out with the amount for Achille and his kavana was for Achille. Vitzamka. And it became smaller in the middle of the Malacha. But for Vitavcha. But then it became back, it, it grew back to the, uh, the original size that it was. What's going to be the Alacha here? Mahu. Yes, dichoi le'inyin Shabbos or ain't dichoi le'inyin Shabbos. Do I say regarding a Malacha on Shabbos that there's a concept of dichoi? 
once the item that you took out for the malacha became too small to be chayev for this malacha, so then it's pushed off from the malacha. It's mevatel the entire malacha. This concept of dichoi is usually brought when you to kachim. Once you have a behema that's not roi for, for to be makrev as a carbon anymore, so then it doesn't become roi for a carbon again. Do I apply the same thing when you get to the malacha on Shabbos that once it is a dichoi that it's not roi for the carbon or it's not roi for the malacha anymore? So over here it's not roi anymore for the malacha and therefore even if it's chazra of a tofcha you won't be chayiv. Teiko. The Gemara doesn't answer this last question there. Zok te Gemara vayte boi minei rove merav nachmen. Sorry. Rove asked the following question from Rav Nachman. <clears throat> Zorak, kezayis, trume, lebayis, tome. The person threw a kezayis of trume into a tome house. Mahu, what's going to be the din? So the Gemara right away wants to understand. Legabe, what are we asking this question? Lamai, what's the relevance of this question? Legabe, which din? Ilin in Shabbos is the question. Legabe, Shabbos, kegregeris pinon. On Shabbos, you have to have the size of a kegregeris, which is larger than a kezayis. So he's talking about a kezayis, so this can't be talking about Shabbos, where you need a kegregeris. Ilin yin tume, if the question was legabe tume, whether this kezayis, that he, kezayis of trume, that he threw in the house, whether it would be makabal tume or not. Kebeitza To be makabal tume, it has to be the size of a kebeitza. So legabe, what was he asking this question when he used the shear of a kezayis? So here there's a machlekes of Rashi and Teisvitz, when you get to this statement, the Gemara here says, Legabe Tumas Eichlin, that you have to have a Kebeitza. Rashi says you only need the shear of a Kebeitza for this food to be metame something else. So Rashi here says, Letame. Not that it should become Tome, but Letame Tumas Eichlin. Teisus argues and Teisus brings rise from places that you see that even to become Tome, it has to have the shear of a Kebeitza. Either way, the shail of the Gemara is that this shear of a Kezayis is not relevant not for Tome and not for Shabbos. So what was the Shailah of Rav? And for the Gemara, Lo'olam Lenyi Shabbos. His Shailah was Benigayat HaShabbos. V'kagoyin the Ike Pachis Mekebetze. What we're talking about over here is, you had an item that was less than a Kebetze. It was only a Kezayis. Kebetze, Mpachis Mekebetze Eichlen. And V'hai Mashlima Lebetze. He threw it into the house that's Tomei. And it lands onto another piece of food that now it gets combined to the shear of a Kebetze to be Mekabal Tume or to be metama other foods. So what's going to be the halacha now? So regarding tume, we know for sure that it is now it's susceptible to tume, or now it could be metama. So do I say, mid the mitzvah of lenient tume, since it combines now to the shear of a kebetza, and therefore it's going to be makabal tume, mechayev nami lenient shabbos. So that's a reason that it should also be choshov to be tume, or to, sorry, to be a malacha for shabbos. If it's chash of legabi the tume, it's chash of also legabi the Shabbos, even though it's not the shear of a kagregeris that's usually required for Shabbos. But once it has the chashivas legabi tume, it also has a chashivas legabi the malacha of Shabbos, oidilme, or perhaps no. Call le inyi Shabbos kagregeris bina, legabi the malacha of Shabbos, I always need a kagregeris. Hmm? By tume, everything's about the chatz. <coughs> Shabbos is gabba em chatz. So here, by this question, you're taking away the gabba. Trex tu lom de shashaylis from me, I hear what you're saying. It's too, too lumdish for me. It's the point. Is the, the person did a, a malacha. The point is the chshivas, though, and a chanami. But the point is the the chshivas of the malacha. This happens after the, the guy was involved. When the malacha, when the when it lands, the moment it lands, and you're the one that put it there, so that when you're putting it down, you're cre- you're creating. The person is creating that chshivas when he places it down and he combines it to a kabeitza, and it's makabel tumah. So therefore, if you were guide him, if you make that chshivas. For the for the tume, it has that chshivas when they get to Shabbos also, huh? For Shabbos, you always need a kegregis. Why should this time be different? Because now before was nothing worth. Now the Indian tume became worth something. So that should transfer in Shabbos. In Shabbos, you always need a kegregis. The chshivas, the chshivas of tume, uh, maybe the chshivas of tume. Shabbos and tume are two separate things. Two separate halachas. Shabbos need a kegregis. Tume need a kebeit. Now, mechatzila was okay. nothing for tume. Yeah, I hear. I hear what you're asking. Look, 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 look into the. Let's see the. Let's see the lashon of Rashi. What does Rashi say? Mid the choshev hach zrikel in yin tome, choshev nami in yin shabbos. Ki ilu hu kegregeris umachayev. Oy lai, 
Should I say that because this zrike is a chosh of zrike, this zrike is mechadish de tumah. It's not, it's not the pshat that you have l'chadchila de kebeitzah for tumah. This zrike is mechadish that now it could be mekabal tumah. Until the moment that it, was, it's, it went down to be mitzdarif, it wasn't susceptible to tumah. It's the fact that you're being gaidim a new chshivis of tumah. So should I say that that new chshivis of Tumma that you guide him now is also saying that this is a choshev Zriki. You accomplish something choshev over here. What's the whole malach of Shabbos? It has to be that you accomplish something choshev. Because your Zriki took an item that was not susceptible to Tumma and you changed it and you made it susceptible to Tumma. So there's a chshivis that you changed and you were guiding him. So therefore should be chayef for Shabbos also. Chayef, that's the pshat. Amalei, so the Gemara answers, Tenisua. We learned this in Abraise. Abishol, Aymer, Abishol says, Shtei alechem, and lechem upon him. So this is of course in the Beis HaMikdosh. So shiuron kegregeris, the shiur to be mighty this, from the where it is in the Beis HaMikdosh, outside into the Rishos HaRabim, what would be the minimum shiur, just like anything else? The shiur by eating is a kegregeris. So the Gemara says, why? Vamai. Why is this the halacha? Aymer, why shouldn't I say, mid le'inyin yoytze. If Lagabi the halacha, that you're not allowed to take out koche kochen, you're not allowed to take out the lechem upon him or the shteya lechem from the base of mikdash. What's the minimum size that you're not allowed to take out? Is a is a kezayis leinu shabbos nami be kezayis. So therefore, if you're if if there's a chshivus Lagabi the iser that by taking it out you're taking out koche kochen outside of the walls of the of the azara. So if it's chashav legabi that, it should have a chashivus also legabi Shabbos. So legabi Shabbos, the shir over here should also be a kezayis. So over there we don't say that. Over there we say, Enachanami, you were geirim a iser when you took it out. And you were, you were, you were over the iser, you were geirim a iser legabi, the being mighty kachim. That's not relevant legabi Shabbos. Legabi Shabbos, you still need the, the shir of the kegregeris. So over here we should say the same thing. Even though you were geirim a tumah, Lagabi the Kibetza, but Lagabi the Kizai, Lagabi the Shabbos, you still need the Kigregiris. So the Gemara says, Hachi Hashta, how can you compare to that case? Hossam, over there, Mida Afke, Chutz Lachem Misazare, the moment you took it out of the walls of the Azare, if so, Lebi Yaitse, it became possible, you were guiding the Psol, you were Machadish of Psol, that it came out of the walls of the Azare. A Shabbos le Machayev, but for, for the Isser of Haitza of Shabbos, you won't be Chayev, Adamapik le Rishus Arabim. Until you bring it into the Rishus Arabim. So it happens in two different times. So you can't say that because of the Chshivis that you have, the Issa, that you took it out and you passled it, you Machadish Absol, that that Chshivis should apply to the uh, Issa of Aitza as well. But Hacha, Shabbos, Vitume, Bahadi, Adadi, Kostian. Here, what you are Machadish, that it should be susceptible to Tume, and the, the conclusion of the Malacha, when it comes down, is happening at the same moment. So over here, there's a Swara to say that the Chshivis of the Tume applies to the Shir of the Haitza of Shabbos as well. So the Gemara does not answer this question. So the Gemara writes, it's in the Hemshcha the Mishnah, Chazar vech nisai eina chayev elekishiyurai. That the person took out something, Lachat Chila, with a Kavana for a certain purpose. And therefore he would be chayv even for a kol shahu. But then he didn't use it for that. And he brought it back into the Rishus HaYachid. So then he's only going to be chayv for the minimum shear Because he's not using it for the amount that he was going to use it l'chadchila. Frek the Gemara pshita. This is obvious. If he didn't plant it, if he didn't use it for what he was planning l'chadchila. So his original machshava is totally bottle. And now he goes back to being like any other person. That he has to have the minimum shear to be chayv. And for the Gemara, you know what we're talking about over here is he, he threw it back into the Rishus HaYachid, into a storehouse. But he threw it back into a place, it lands somewhere where it's going to be noticed where it is. It lands in a place where he knows where it is. So Mao the Tema, I would think, even the Mekayimai Nikir, he's throwing it back into a place inside the Rishus HaYachid, and he's going to remember and see where it is. The Milsa Kamai Sakai. His original machshava that he's planning on using it to plant is still there. He puts it, he's throwing it into a certain place where he's still going to end up using it for this. Still it's still chashiv to him. Kamash malan. So therefore the Mishnah is teaching you, Medezar ke Since he threw it back into the storehouse, betuli batle. That's enough to be mevatl, his previous machshava. So in other words, going back to the, this is a hemshech to the point that we said before, that we said that what a, the action a person does later is a hemshech to his original machshava, there's a limit to that. If 
You're taking it out, stam, after your original machshava, I say that it's a hamshuk to your original machshava. But once you throw it back into the storehouse, even if the place where it lands is noticeable and you could theoretically go and pick it up again and take it to fulfill your original machshava, so far you don't go. Then I say his original machshava is bottle. A person that carries out food and he placed it down on, on a skupa, placed it down on a uh, threshold between the Rishus HaYachid and the Rishus HaRaven. The Gemara will explain that we're talking about a Carmelis. Whether he then picked it up and took it out into the Rishus HaRaven from there, Bein Acher, somebody else came and picked it up and took it out into the Rishus HaRaven from there, Potter. You're going to be potter. The malacha was not done all at in one action. It began in the Rishus HaYachid, it ended up in the Rishus HaRaven, but it was with a break where you put it down into the Carmelis in between. Kupa, if you have a box or a basket, it's full of fruits, and you put it on the outside, the, the threshold of the... Going into the Rishus Rabim, Apa Pisha Raiv Peris Mi Bachut. So you place it down over there in a, in a, in a spot where Raiv of the Peris that are inside this basket are actually already into the Rishus Rabim. So most of the basket is in the Rishus Rabim. Pot. You'll be pot. Achi Yaitzi Eskola Kupa. You're only going to be Chayiv if you take out the entire basket into the Rishus Rabim and not if part of the basket is still in the Rishus Yachit. Dr. Gemara, Hi, Askupe, Mai. When the Mishnah talks about this threshold that he places down the food over there or the item there, what are we talking about? Are we talking about a threshold that's going to have the halach of Rishusarabim? And Rashi explains when will it have the halach of Rishusarabim? It's not, it's l'chayr, it's not part of Rishusarabim, it's an Askupa, it's on the side of Rishusarabim. How could it be Rishusarabim? So Rashi brings the Gemara that we learned on Dav Ches, where it says that if you have a place in the Rosh Hashanah that's tall, exactly nine Amis, nine Tvachim, sorry, that's tall nine Tvachim, which is a uh, place that Rabbi Mechatim people use it to position and uh, fix their packages that they're carrying, so that's part of the Hishtamshus of the Rosh Hashanah. So if this Askupa is that height, and therefore people will use it as part of their walking in the Rosh Hashanah, so then Potter, the Mishnah says, he's Potter if he places it there. He's taking it out until the Rosh Hashanah. You'll have to say that this Askup is talking about the Rosh Hashanah. In other words, it's tall, ten him, so it's high enough to be a Rosh Hashanah. So how could it say in the Mishnah, whether he took it out from there into the Rosh Hashanah or someone else took it out. Potter, he would be Potter. How could it be Potter? He's carrying from Rishus Yachid to Rishus Arab. Ella, so the answer is the Pshad of the mission is Askupa Carmelis. This Askupa is a Carmelis. It's not tall 10 Tvachim, it's not tall 9 Tvachim, it's somewhere between 3 and uh, 9 Tvachim, and therefore has the halacha of a Carmelis. And the Hokam Ashmulon, and what the mission here is teaching me is Taime de Nachbe Carmelis. The only reason why there's an interruption in this Malacha and his Potter is because he put it down in the Carmelis. But if you walked from the Rishus HaYachid and you went through this Carmelis into the Rishus HaRabim, then you would be Chayiv, even though you didn't go directly from the Rishus HaYachid into the Rishus HaRabim, he walked through the Carmelis. And what's the Chiddush here? What it says here in the Mishnah is not following the opinion of Ben which we had, this was, I think, on Davav Amit Beis, where the Gemara there says, the Tanya, Hamaitzi Machanus Laplatya, Derech Stav, a person that carries from a store into an open plaza, into a Rosh Sarabim, through a Stav, the Stav is the place where there's benches, where the merchants sit there, or they put their merchandise there, which is a Carmelis. So you went from a Rosh Hashanah to a Rosh Hashanah through the Carmelis. You didn't stop, you just walked through there. Chayiv, the Tanakhama says, you Chayiv. Or Ben Azai, Poiter. Ben Azai says, you Poiter. If you remember, Ben Azai's opinion was, Mahalach Chayim Vedami. Even walking, every step you take, your feet are going onto the ground. And there's, therefore, it's, it's like you're making a Hanocha, and therefore, it's, a, it's an interruption of the Malacha when you walk through the Carmelis. So, our Mishnah here is not like the opinion of Benazai. Okay, the next case in the Mishnah was the basket of fruits. So, it said in the Mishnah that if you took out a basket of fruits into the Rishus Arabim, it has to be fully taken out of the Rishus Arabim, not halfway. So, there's going to be a Machlaikis over in the Gemara. What exactly is the case of the Mishnah? 
So Chizkiya said as follows, Loishanu ela bekupa meleya kishuan idluan. The Mishnah is talking over here about a basket that's full with cucumbers or dluan, which is uh, gourds or melons, which are also longer uh, vegetables. <coughs> so then what happens is when you take out and only part of the basket is in the Rishus HaRavim, so even the contents of the basket, the vegetables inside, only half of the cucumber is taken out and not fully. Part of the paytas inside of the basket is also still in the Rishus HaYachid. If the basket is full of little uh, mustard seeds, so then there are, there are many of the mustard seeds that are already fully taken out into the Rishus HaRavim. Chayef. So then you're going to be Chayef. Even though it's all in one basket, it doesn't matter. Alme, so the Gemara says, what do we see from here? Kasava, Chizkiya holds. Eget keili, loishme eget. The fact that you have all these mustard seeds inside of this keili, inside of this one basket, that, that doesn't create a connection that it's still partially in the Rishus HaYachet. You look at each peiri, each seed for itself in the, in the uh, basket, and therefore what's in the Rishus HaRabim is in the Rishus HaRabim, and you'd be Chayef for that. That's Chizki is Prat in the Mishnah. You call it a, a <clears throat> yeah, it's a full anoche. Those seeds that are out in the Rishus HaRabim are in the Rishus HaRabim. Aye, they're part of the basket that's partially in the Rishus HaYachid. The keli that's partially in the Rishus HaYachid is not connected back to the Rishus HaYachid. Yechenin Omar, Rabbi Yechenin says, Afila Malaya Chardel, even if the basket is full of mustard seeds, potter. You're going to be potter. It's not because you have long vegetables and therefore part of the paytas, part of the vegetables are still in the Rishus HaYachid. It's because of the basket. Alma Kasava, so we see that what's Rabbi Yechenin's opinion? Eget keli shmei eget. The fact that part of the keli is still in the Rishus HaYachid, that connects everything, all the paytas inside, to still be in the Rishus HaYachid. So this is the Machleikis. We had this mentioned before already also. Uh, Machleikis of Eget keli. You have items inside a basket. Is the keli creator eged that it's still in the Rishus HaYachid or not? Amr Abzeir, so says Rabzeir, let's take a look now on the Lashon of the Mishnah. Masnisen, if you look in the words of the Mishnah, the like Chizki Yedeke, the words of the Mishnah is not going to fit with, Rab, uh, with Chizki's opinion, or the like Rav Yechen and Deke. And it's not going to fit with Rav Yechenin's opinion either. And the Gemara is going to be Medayek of the two parts of the statement of the Mishnah. It doesn't fit with Chizkiyah's opinion. Diktani, because it says in the Mishnah, as kol hakupa, that you only chayev if, if you took out the entire basket. So it, it doesn't talk in the Mishnah about taking out all the paytas in the basket. It says kol hakupa, time of kol hakupa. You only chayev if you took out the entire basket. Hakol paytas, potter. But if you took out all the paytas, you would still be potter. Why? Even though it's little seeds of chardel and you have full seeds of chardel that were taken out, doesn't matter. It's not kolakupa, eget keli, it's still connected to the Rishus HaYachet. That's what it's mashma the Mishnah, not like Chizkiah. Alma kesava, eget keli, shmei eget. Lashon of the Mishnah is mashma, that if part of the kup is inside, it's connected to the Rishus HaYachet in your potter. And also, according to Rabbi Yechenin, the Mishnah is not meduyik, if you look at the other part of what it says in the Mishnah. The Tani, it says before that, even though most of the paytas are outside, you're going to be potter. Time the roif paytas. So it's mashma from the Mishnah. You know why you're potter because only roif paytas are outside. Oh, kol paytas. If all of the paytas inside the basket were already outside, even if there's still a part of the basket itself that's still on the inside in the Rishos HaYachet, you would still be Chayev. Why does the Mishnah say Rav? Rav is mashma that we do have to pay attention to the paytas inside and not to the basket. So So we see that the Tana of the Mishnah holds that the Eged of the Keli doesn't matter. You have to look at the paytas inside. So So we have a question here. The Mishnah is contradicting itself. The Lashenis of the Mishnah is not mashma, not like Chizkiyeh, not like Rabbi Yechenin. So how are we going to learn this? And for the Gemara, Chizkiyeh, Metaretz L'Taimei, Chizkiyeh will explain the Mishnah according to his opinion, but Rabbi Yechenin, Metaretz L'Taimei, and Rabbi Yechenin will explain the Mishnah according to his opinion. Chizkiyeh, Metaretz L'Taimei, Chizkiyeh will explain the Mishnah according to his opinion. When it says in the Mishnah, Ad she'yaitzi is kol kupa until he takes out the entire basket, what the Mishnah means to say is, It's if the basket is filled with these longer vegetables. 
but if it's full with small seeds of mustard, then nasa kimisha hoitzi is kol It's as if he took out the entire basket. When the Mishnah says kol it means the contents of the kupa. And therefore, depending on what's inside, that will determine if it's as if he took out the entire kupa. So even though it's not the actual Lashon of the Mishnah, but you have to learn the Mishnah this way in order to make sense out of the Mishnah. Because the Mishnah itself, right before that, said that it's totally in the Paytas. So therefore, even here, when it says Kupa, it means depending on what's inside the Kupa. That's how Rav Chizki is metaritz the Mishnah. Rav Yechen is metaritz the Taimei. Rav Yechen says the Pshara on the Mishnah is, Afal Pisha Reif Paytas Bechutz. The Mishnah Taka speaks about Reif Paytas, but it doesn't really mean Reif. Veloi Reif Paytas Bulvad. It doesn't mean Reif alone. El Afila Kol Paytas. Even if all the Paytas inside the Kupa are outside, Potter Achayaitzi es Kala Kupa. He's going to be Potter until he takes out the, the entire Kupa. So the Mishnah Taka started off saying Reif Paytas, but it immediately adds and clarifies that not only Reif, but even if you have all the paytas outside, that's not enough until the entire kupa is outside. Ache Yetzi is kola kupa, like Rabbi Yechelen's opinion, because eget keli shmei eget. Okay, so now the Gemara, this, this discussion goes until the next Mishnah. It's machleik, it's about eget keli. We'll learn just one more shtickle, a shayla the Gemara has on this Indian. Meisvei says in Abraisa, Maitzi kupa a person takes out a basket that a peddler uses. And he placed this basket on the outside of the skupa. So we're going into the Rishosarab. Even though most of the minin of the kupa are already on the outside in the Rishosarab. He's potter until he takes out the entire basket. So this seems to say that you have to, like Rabbi Yechelen's shitta, you have to take out the entire basket and otherwise, eget kelish me eget. So the Havamin of the Gemara here is Bitsrari, that this basket is talking about little um, pieces of uh, Bissamim that Ashi says, that are tied together, small things that even though the entire Kupa is not outside, you have already full Bissamim, the contents of the basket is already, it's this Chalakim inside that are fully taken out. If so, Kashia Lechiskia. This is a question on Chiskia's opinion that it says that you have to take out the basket fully to be Chayev. So Chizkiya answers, no, <coughs> you know what this Braise is talking about? It's talking about bundles of longer stalks of uh, whatever it is that is used to make the besamim from it, that the peddlers are selling, and therefore when he didn't take out the entire basket, part of the contents of the basket is still in the Rishos and that's the reason why it's potter. Uh,